So, what is the proof for misophonia? Well, in many cases, it's really not that hard, because uh, most people listening to this may not instantly suspect this, but sometimes when I get at my worst, I can end up slamming my head against the wall while crying and screaming and clawing at my face with my fingernails in some sort of a primordial, illogical attempt at removing the suffering from inside my mind. But doesn't that prove that something is wrong with me? Normal people don't exactly act like that, so why would somebody act like that? I mean, I sure as hell don't want to. But let's say you believe that your family member or somebody you know has an abnormal obsession with wanting attention when they say they have a problem with noises. But now here's your burden of proof. If you can't prove that, why should you just automatically believe it? Maybe you've heard about people who say they've had this condition for like 40 some odd years, also tending to be normal in almost every other way, but just complaining about the sounds. If this person has no previous history of always wanting to have attention, do you really want to just pretend like their problems are not an issue and have to put up with a, a family member screaming at you or hating you every time that you make some kind of a noise that you blatantly decided not to prevent? Because I promise it's going to just keep sucking for everybody full circle. This is why I'd like to tell people who have misophonia to tell people about it, because it's not themselves who are being disrespectful for not turning out normal like everyone else. It's because of the fact that we keep it inside that very few people know about it or have any sort of documentation on this condition. At the same time, though, you have to understand that we also know that telling people about it can cause them to be nervous around us so that they wind up walking on eggshells around us, or even, on the flip side, actually making fun of it. But think of this. We all have certain things or noises that piss us off, probably for no logical reason, yet people understand this. But they don't understand misophonia because it's much more pervasive in one's life. So then, if I knew what made you mad and made fun of it, you uh, would probably get mad and take a swing at me, right? Well, why would you expect me to act any differently? At any rate, I mean, this condition is probably some sort of a personality disorder, which is at least inherent in it, but it's not an attention-grabbing one. Sounds generally don't bother us by themselves, or at least not at first. It's always the perception of those sounds that cause sound to become annoying. But the thing that defines people such as myself is that for some reason I seem to have lost the ability to tune out environmental changes or intrusions like everyone else does. When something starts bothering me, it just keeps building an annoyance until I can't stand to be around it, regardless of how many times I've heard it or am aware of it. I'm fully aware that the noise is, in the end, quite trivial and nothing worth being bothered over, but knowing that isn't enough. Just knowing that fact doesn't help. It's important for you to understand that the annoyance has become nothing short of pure hatred inside of me. And I do hate myself for it. I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to be so easily annoyed. And I have tried harder than a lot of people might like to admit not to get so upset so easily. And also to face my annoyances. Which is one of the many reasons why I joined the military quite a while back. And why I also chose to stay at a dormitory while I was going to college. Nothing changed, though. I want this thing inside of me to go away, or at least start acting slightly more normal. But it doesn't act that way, you know? It, it almost seems to act of its own accord. And no, I'm not demon-possessed like some people who shall remain nameless would like to think. Bear in mind that there are several medications or uh, medical anomalies that we have drugs for these days for afflictions that were once believed to be the work of demons or sin, like bacterial infections, for example. But anyway, uh, to put it all in perspective, if I'm not the kind of person to complain about every little thing like I complain about noises, then give me some credit that I might actually have a problem coping with them. And if you know about it and you don't want to divide your family or you don't want to make your spouse miserable every waking second, try pretending like you give a crap. Or, better yet, don't pretend. 